Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Park and I'm your host. And today's topic is what percentage of men cheat and what's on the other side for you? Okay. So this morning I put a poll together in my Facebook group and the poll said what percentage of men cheat? And I basically listed all and then I went from 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%. And then, of course, we had the all, which would have been 100%. Okay. Now, when I put this poll up, I did not vote. And I didn't vote for a reason. Because I didn't want my vote to have any influence on what everybody else said. That way, when I did my video today, I can talk about what you said. Meaning, I have completely removed myself from this poll. Meaning that I don't have a voice in this poll. I'm only talking about what you said. That's it. What you said. I decided to do this because last week I put some information out and I had women, you know, of all age groups, but I had some that were adamant that couldn't nobody else tell them nothing pertaining to marriage or relationships or anything. And my position is we have to remain teachable. But when I went on, because see, when you get on my page and you comment, oh, can't, no, can't nobody tell me nothing. When you say stuff like that, I'm the type of person I'm going to click on your page. I'm going to click on your profile. And at that point, I'm going to go start reading. Because I want to find out about you and your life. And that was a person, and this person was much, much older than me. Literally at great-grandparent age. And from what I saw on their page, their life and their lifestyle was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. And what came to my mind was... I understand why your life is the way it is because you seem to be like one of those people who nobody could tell you nothing your whole life and look at the outcome. All because you are not teachable. And all of your mistakes are on your Facebook page. It's showing up loud and clear on your page. Your life from what I saw was nothing for anybody to aspire to want to be. We have to remain teachable. I don't care what your age is. I don't care what your marital status is. We have to remain teachable. Okay. So today's topic is what's on the other side. When we talk about issues in the relationships, issues in marriages, a lot of people first response is, I'm, I wouldn't be putting up with this. I wouldn't be doing that. I would leave. I would this. I would that. And the thing is, a lot of single women, that especially ones that have never been married, don't understand marriage. So married women, I want you to be very cautious about taking information from people who never walked in your shoes. Because if they never stood at the altar and said vows to be with somebody through thick, thin, good, bad, better, worse, whatever, they can never understand what marriage is. They can, ever, they can never understand what that type of level of commitment is. They can never understand what legacy is. They can never understand what it means to want to have certain things to be able to pass down. Now that I've gotten that out the way, it seems that 70%, that was the, the one that we got the most answers on. But I want to talk about the top five answers. What percentage of men cheat? 70% got the most 50% was after 70%. 90% was after the 50%. After that, it was 30%, 40%. So, all I'm saying is, 
People say leave. You leaving because of infidelity. What is waiting for you on the other side? According to what you say, according to what you say, because I talked about three different forms of cheating, virtual, emotional, physical. According to what you say, the only thing that is waiting on me, the only thing that's waiting for me as a married woman on the other side is to be cheated on again. That's what y'all telling me. Y'all are telling me as a married woman to leave my husband, to leave my stability, to leave the person that I love, to leave the person that I vowed to spend the rest of my life with. Now, am I saying cheating is right? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying marriage is a choice. I'm saying to stay in a marriage is a choice. But what I'm saying is y'all giving all this advice, but you also telling me that on the other side, the only thing that's waiting for me is to be fucking cheated on. That's what you're telling me. Y'all said this. I didn't. You saying that the chances of me getting cheated on are far greater than the chances of me not getting cheated on. Then a lot of us get on here and we, we get on these posts and we, we saying all of this, but then we say, oh, but my man different. My man different. I wasn't talking about my man on here. Not, not my man. Because I don't need transparency in my relationship. Not my man. Mm -mm. What do I need transparency for? Not my man. Uh-uh. Because my man different. That's y'all man on here. But the thing is, what I know is a lot of women come into my inbox anonymous because they're embarrassed. They're embarrassed that they are in this situation all over again, time after time again. I left one relationship for this reason. Now I'm in another relationship. I'm older. And I'm still in the same situation. Sharonda, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do because we keep spinning our wheels? The same thing keeps happening to us over and over and over again. What's the solution? I gave it to you last week. I gave you the solution. The solution is transparency. See, some of y'all took that message of transparency and y'all took it as though I'm telling you to go check up on this and look into that and check phones and do this and that the other. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is certain things have to be available to you. But see, when I know you have access to certain things, I have a knowing in my mind that I don't want to do certain things. Because I know it's a possibility that it could be found out. But when I have all of this freedom of secrecy, then I'm less likely to be on this list because I know you don't have access to nothing. And I know that I can be sneaky and I can do certain things because ain't nobody gonna know because don't nobody have access to nothing because I got it set up like that. See, some of y'all went last week and y'all went, let me see your phone. Let me see your email. But you went about it all wrong. See, the thing is, the reason why I have wife school, see, I'm giving you all of this information. But see, when you come to my wife school, I give you the tools to get the desired results. I, I give you the tools on how to go about getting transparency. Because see, the thing is, you coming in and you asking for transparency, but there's certain things that you haven't done. So when you've done certain things, a person is going to willingly give you access to anything that you want and need. 
Because you did some other stuff. See, it's some other stuff that you got to work on before you can even request that. Before you can even suggest that. But that's what wife school is for. Because I can't give it all to you. I can give you the fundamentals, which is what I'm doing. So, this is what y'all telling me that I have to look forward to on the other side. Which is another heartbreak. When I'm giving you suggestions, because I can't make you do anything. When I give you suggestions, a lot of y'all say, Sharonda, you're trying to take us back into the 50s. You're trying to take us back to where these men are dominating. You're trying to take us back to a, a certain time period that we marched and, and we had laws passed and and we had all these movements of sexual revolution and feminist movement and all this kind of stuff. And all I'm saying is, look at what you're doing. Is it working for you? You still getting cheated on? Is it working for you? You still raising your children by yourself? Is it working for you? Children on all this medication, behavior problems and all of this other stuff, is it working for you? Look at your life. Is it working for you? You struggling from paycheck to paycheck. Is it working for you? You walk around with anxiety, afraid, because you don't know what's going to happen with this, that, the other. Is it working for you? What I'm saying is, how about you try something different? How about you try a little tenderness? How about you try some kindness? How about you try handling your man in love? How about you try being a little more encouraging? Spencer showed me a post last night and the woman said, how can a man that been with you for five years? No, 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 no. I'm saying it wrong. How can a man treat a woman that he only known for five months better than he treated you and he knew you for five years? The reason a man can treat a woman better that he's only known for five months is because she is speaking a different type of language. If I am breathing life into you, if I am encouraging you, if I am showing you something different, then I can expect a different result. I can expect that. See, I got this recipe box here for a reason. Some of y'all probably, y'all used to cook books and stuff like that. I got I got this these recipes here. I, I got this here for a reason. Cause a lot of these recipes was written in the 1940s and 50s. But I, I'm gonna touch on this. A lot of these recipes have been passed down. Passed down. I'm, I'm gonna talk about that. The importance of passing down information. I'm, I'm gonna touch on that. But the reason. A man can treat a woman that he only known for five months better than he treated you and he knows you for five years is it doesn't matter about the time frame that he known you versus how long he's known her. What matters is the way that she treats him. And when you treat a man in such a way to you have him feeling like he walking on the clouds, you going to get a different outcome Versus a woman that treats him like he ain't shit. See, when you treat him like he ain't shit and he feel like he can't never do nothing to please you and he constantly feeling like he ain't good enough and he can't measure up because you constantly belittle him in everything that he does, you're going to get a different version than the woman that say, baby, you could do this. Oh, you, you talented. You know, people will pay you to do this. You know, I really appreciate you for this. See, it's a different language that's being spoken. So you can expect a different outcome. When I met Spencer, he dated a woman that was much, much, much older than me. She was an older woman. And when she met Spencer, he was maybe 17 or 18 and to put him on, she went and got some dope to, to put him on. In other words, she wanted, she wanted a nigga that trapped. 
so when she met him, her idea of him coming up was to put him on. Now, if you know anything about Spence and his family, he come from a family of people who necessarily didn't walk on the legal side of life. So trapping wasn't anything that was new to him. But my point is, this woman came along in his life and she helped him with that. She assisted him with that. Right? They parted ways because she ended up going to jail. That's why they parted ways, because she ended up going to jail. Then comes Sharonda. Well, when I met Spencer, he was in a whole nother different type of lifestyle. And I explained to him, I, I don't want that. That's not what I want. Because you are very smart and I see something different in you. Let me help you to do something different. So that means that Sharonda had a different experience with Spencer than this other woman had with Spencer. That's why I put that on there. You got one woman that'll come along and guess what? She's going to encourage you to trap. But then you, you go on in your life and you meet another woman and she's going to encourage you to start your own business. These two women are different. They are not the same. So the outcome is going to be different. So you got to look at what you're pouring into these men. And that will show you why you keep getting the results that you're getting. Because a lot of times we walk around and we think in our mind that, oh, I'm a good woman. And I'm this and I'm that. But the truth is, we have our own little way of belittling the people that we with. Letting them know that they not good enough. For example, if the person is providing some certain things for you, I'm going to use a house for an example. They're providing you with a house that they could afford. But you keep on putting all this pressure on them for a bigger house, a bigger house, a bigger house. Eventually, they start to feel like what they're providing for you is not good enough. And then they start to feel like they're not good enough because they can't provide you with what you want. In your own little way, you told them that they wasn't good enough, whether you want to admit it or not. But I sit here and I tell you, I ain't moving. I'm staying right there in that 1,700 square feet house that Spencer can afford. When Spencer can afford a 4,000 square foot house, then that's when Sharonda moving. Up until then, Sharonda's going to be thankful and content that she has somebody that can provide a 1,700 square foot house. Sharonda understand that her children are getting older and they moving out. And if I need more closet space, I'll turn one of their bedrooms into a closet if I have to. But we're going to stay right there where Spencer can afford. And I'm going to let Spencer know every day that I appreciate this home that you provide for me. I'm not going to ever say that. I need you to go out there and do more than what you're doing because I need a bigger house. We got to understand that we have a way of speaking a language. And either we're going to encourage and pour life into these people that we with and learn how to get along with these people that we with or we're going to continue to do the things that we're doing and continue to get the same result here go the results right here i did not vote y'all voted y'all came up with the results all i'm doing is reading out this paper which y'all voted on you say 70% of men cheat, you leave your good thing because he didn't do this and he didn't do that and he didn't pick up and he ain't motivated and he ain't ambitious and he don't want to go out there and get a hustle on the side of his job and I feel like I work and I got a hustle and I take care of kids and I do this and I do that and he ain't measuring up with me. So I'm going to leave. Well, guess what? This is what's waiting on you on the other side. This is what y'all say. So y'all go ahead and keep on listening to these bitter ass women in this group encouraging you to leave your family. 
Just know that this is what's waiting on the other side. I asked a question, and it was a question designed to trigger you. And I said, as women, we quite naturally, we are nurturers, right? And of course, this is not advocating for you to stay with people that's cheating on you. That's not what this is about. But what I, what I want you to do is look at it from a different perspective because this topic is what's waiting for you on the other side, right? And y'all say 70% of men cheat. So that's what's waiting on you on the other side. Okay. And I'm going to be honest with you. Them 30% that ain't cheating is because don't nobody want their asses. I told y'all this morning, when you deal with somebody that's attractive and they have resources, then guess what? The chances of women approaching them are greater. The chances of men approaching them are greater. Because the thing is, you want them. I always just say, I don't want nothing that don't nobody else want. God damn it, it got to be hard if don't nobody else want it. We look at cars that other people drive in and we be like, ooh, I want that car. Because it's bad. Ooh, I'm, I'm riding around in nice neighborhoods. Ooh, I want that house. But we look at it different when we're dealing with other people who are attractive, attractive to us. Meaning they're attractive in their appearance, they're attractive in their resources, and all of this type of stuff. So the thing is, you got it and you want it. Don't feel bad when you realize that somebody else wants it too. And they willing to give you a run for your money. Behind your man. But anyway, what was I saying? Oh, I said, okay, your husband cheated. Your husband, the end result of cheating was an outside child, right? Most women, they have families already, meaning that they have children. And that means that this child will be the sibling to their child, which means at this point, this child has become family. A lot of y'all grown ass women say that child ain't my family. Yes, it is. Because this child is a part of your husband and he is your family. Yes, it is. R regardless if you want to acknowledge it or not, or not, this child is your children's family. And see, when you start walking around talking about this child ain't my family, your children start saying, that ain't my brother, that ain't my sister. And you just create a division right there because of your mentality. So moving on, I said, now... You make a decision, a conscious decision to leave, right? Because you don't want to be a part of a man that cheated and got an outside child, right? Okay, that's understandable. But then you go out there in the field and guess what's waiting on you? This. But the thing is, you will go and meet another man and take in his children and nurture his children who are not your family. But your husband got an outside child and these children are your family, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. And you will shut the door on them. But you'll open up your door for this man, Sharon, and build his legacy. But this your family over here. But you're going to close the door over here because you ain't helping build that legacy. Oh, no. Mm -mm. But the thing is, your chances of, of this man cheating on you, how, how, how great are so my thing is, what is the difference? What, what is the difference? Because you knew what he did over here. You walked into this situation with a strong possibility of the same outcome that you left over here. If you can't see that you're spinning your wheels, something wrong. So all I'm trying to get you to understand is, what do you need to do different? You need to try a different approach. You need to try to be mindful of your tone when you're talking. You need to try to be a little more kinder, a little more tender, a little more loving, caring, because that's how you draw your man to you. See, when you're giving him all that rah, 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 all you're doing is pushing him further away. That's it. So, I was looking at this and I told you I'd be having to pull up my notes. Okay, here we go. Men that are faithful report that they are satisfied in their current relationship. These are the men that are faithful. 
They say that they faithful because they satisfied in their current relationship. These men also report that their partners treat them well. These men also report that they do not want to hurt their partners. These men also report that they don't want to take the chance of destroying their relationship. Because they are most confident that their partners are not cheating on them. The next thing is, these men are concerned about their relationship with God. First of all, and I'm not saying that God was not high on the list, but I'm saying that the first thing they considered was their partner. They took a look at their life and said, you know what? I'm satisfied. This person treats me well, and I don't want to hurt them. Those are the men that don't cheat. I want you to pay attention to the thing that they said, though. They satisfied and their partner treats them well. All I'm telling you to do is to treat your man well. All I'm telling you to do is try a different approach. Stop being in conflict. Stop arguing about everything. Stop making everything a big deal. Learning how to cooperate. Learning to allow this man to lead you. Meaning submit to them. What is another word for submit? To allow them uh, to allow them to guide you. This is all the stuff that I'm telling you to do that y'all constantly fight me on. That y'all constantly say, Sharonda, you're trying to take us back to the 50s. Sharonda, you're trying to put these men over us to where they dominating us. I don't give a damn about you dominating me if you treat me good. I don't care about you dominating me if you considering me and everything that go on. You can dominate me all goddamn day if you treat me right. But the problem is a lot of you all don't trust your partners enough to allow them to control. It's the truth. They don't cheat because they don't want to feel ashamed that they betrayed their partner. These men, I didn't say boys, these men are strongly against cheating. See, when you meet people and they have a certain attitude about a thing, meaning that they feel strongly about their family in their unit, and they would never want to do anything to jeopardize that. Those are the men that's telling you that that ain't the direction that I want to go in. I'm trying to be with you and love up on you. And I'm trying to share my life with you. I'm not trying to hurt you. But see, a lot of times we go and jump head first for people who ain't speaking this type of language. We jump head first for men that we know don't have no type of foundation or no relationship with God. All of those things are important. That's why I knew that this wife school had to happen. Because a lot of women have not been taught how to select men. Y'all are accepting proposals and engagements from people who are not equipped to be husbands. Y'all just happy that somebody picked you. What's waiting for you on the other side when you decide not to do the things that I'm telling you to do to build your marriage or your relationship? Because a lot of y'all want these relationships because you want somebody to, to look cute with. You want you want to be able to have somebody to post up for Man Crush Monday and all this whole other stuff. You know, I don't call it foolishness because I understand a lot of us are in different age groups. I don't post up Man, up Man Crush Monday. That ain't my thing. Okay. I go up in there to his face and let him know, baby, I love you. I enjoy being with you. I enjoy spending time with you. Baby, you floats my boat. You make this thing tingle. See, I, I'm a more face-to-face -face type of person. I ain't on the internet talking about no man crush Monday and all that. But some of y'all, that's what y'all do, and I understand that. 
But I just want you to understand that when you are not doing the things that I'm telling you that you need to do to ensure happiness in your relationship, this is what's waiting for you on the other side. Lonely. You, you can leave your man, your relationship, your marriage. You can, you can leave it. Especially my, my ladies that got children. This was waiting for you on the other side. Loneliness and depression. I don't give a damn how much these women get to talk about. Ooh, girl, I left and I got my peace. Ooh, I got my peace. Yeah, she might have got her peace. But it's some other shit that came along with it too. That she ain't telling you about. And I'm going to tell you about the shit that's on the other side. That she ain't going to tell you about. Loneliness is on the other side. Which a lot of times turns into depression. Being a single parent is on the other side. Which a lot of times turns into frustration. Financial hardship is on the other side. Which a lot of times turns into you losing a lot of things that you have worked hard for. I just, I'm not telling you to stay. I'm not telling you to leave. I'm just laying out everything that's out there. I, I'm laying out this 70% this that you're going to have to deal with on the other side. That means you got a 30% chance of getting one. And in that 30%, there's a small percentage that are God-fearing men. That understand what they want. But then you got this other percentage that's on the other side, that's down low. You got this other percentage, that's on, this other percentage on the other side that, that don't nobody want for whatever reason. Because a lot of y'all that be on that table, I say, oh, my man don't cheat in there. Girl, I go click on your page. I want to see. I want to see his ass. And I be like, oh, okay, I understand. I understand why. Don't nobody want them but you. And it's okay to get somebody that don't nobody want but you if that's how you're rolling. If that's, if that's what you want to look at every day, something that don't nobody want but you, that's fine. But I like the old handsome ass man to look at. I, I like the old sex ass man. That's my pussy get wet for that. Not some shit that don't nobody want to look at. But no. Mm -mm. What's waiting on the other side? Lesbianism. A lot of women leave men and go be with women, not because they really want to be with women, but they feel like that's their only option at this point because men have done this, 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 that, the other. And then what, what goes along with lesbianism? Battling with your spiritual beliefs. See, I'm talking about the shit that other people don't want to talk about. Because they'll make it seem like, oh girl, it's fun over here. But guess what? When you get on the other side with them lesbians, them bitches cheat too. They is the biggest whores over there on the other side. A wise woman told me if I had known what I know today, I would still be with husband number one. I would not be on husband number four. Because you know what she realized? She knew what issues husband number one had. And let me tell you something. If you're doing the things that I'm telling you, even if your husband is being unfaithful virtually, emotionally, or physically, he will stop. And want me to tell you why? Not in, And I'm not saying everybody because it's, it's not, not all or nothing. But I'm talking about the majority of them will stop. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if you get in what you need from where you want it, then you don't have no reason to go dibble and dabble all of them other places. And that's the truth. If my needs are being met, I don't have to go here, there, the other. Now, granted, you're going to have some people that's just greedy. But what I want you to understand is them men not monogamous anyway. And you knew that when you met them that they were not monogamous. So you play a role in owning it. You married somebody who you knew was not a monogamous person. So even with that, in order for you to get along with them, because it's your husband that you pick, your cheating ass husband, your unfaithful husband, y'all got to come to some type of, if you're going to be with him, 
Y'all got to come to some type of understanding about this open marriage that y'all have. Because that's what it is. Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, you in an open marriage. You in some type of poly relationship where you want of the women. Y'all just have to come on the same page about what's going on. Whether it is, look, you out there doing what you're doing, but I don't want them contacting me and calling me. I don't want no outside children and I damn sure don't want no diseases. Those are the type of conversations that have to be had. Not you waking up every day getting mad because you know what he doing. But you know you're not going nowhere either. This, rep, this recipe box. I brought this to work today. I'm, I'm passing down the knowledge to you. I'm giving you the formula. It's up to you to take it and utilize it. I got this recipe box and it tells me how to do some of everything. Now I could be a wise woman and look at these recipes with the proven results. Meaning that if I do it like they say they like that, like this, this, these recipes are telling me to do it, I'm more likely to have a better chance that it's gonna turn out right. Versus me showing up in the kitchen, not knowing what ingredients I need, not knowing how long to cook, not knowing what I need to prep with, and just putting some shit together through trial and error, and I got to hope that it turned out right. Because I have not been given the tools to ensure great success. This, this the tools to ensure great success. I'm giving you the tools. If you follow the tools, your chances of your marriage or your relationship being on the right track are far greater than you being a person walking around saying, can't nobody tell me nothing. I'm going to get out here and I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to do it my way. I don't want no instruction. I don't want no guidance. I don't want nothing. And I basically have to live my life bumping my head over and over and over again, starting relationships with three and four different men a year to get the same result. I don't want that many motherfuckers jumping up in my ass. I'm serious. The whole thought of three and four different motherfuckers humping and pumping and dumping just don't sit well in my fucking spirit. At all. Some of you, it might not matter too much. And I get it. But when you understand who you are and you understand your work, that shit just ain't gonna sit well with you. All right. I've done my job today. Like, share, subscribe. Tip the cash app down there. You all be blessed. You all be safe.